Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. So lovely to meet you virtually. Lovely to meet you too, Sarah. Yeah, absolutely. Where am I speaking to you from? Where are you? Are you in I America? am in my office in Stockwell in London. Where are you? Yeah, also in London. Um, yeah, it's just saying the weather's <laughs> not gone gone back to being nice yet has it but at least we have um a glowing win in the euros to enjoy yeah, so that'll yeah. Keep us, uh, warm. well funnily enough i landed from rome yesterday and uh so it was super hot and then got back and it was quite nice to be in the sort of cold and not to feel like um i would just be a sweaty mess every time i step out but um got back to the football and i'm quarantining so i've got to stay home so it's it was it was lovely just to sit down watch the telly see history rewrite itself yeah I mean, I was thinking, as I'm not even that much of a football fan, but um, I was just, I re remember so vividly the Euros last time. And actually, it just felt amazing. Something's finally going right. Um, exactly, I exactly. I, rem I remember, well, 25 years ago when the, the last time we played Germany in Wembley and it uh, didn't go so well. I was graduating from university and uh, yeah, it just brings you straight back. It's funny how events, national events like that uh, just are the... The markers of our lives and it's uh, yeah it felt it was a good day yesterday mm, indeed well to to the the subject in hand um tell us a bit about innocent then so obviously you're joining for um season two um so what was it about this series that attracted you um to be involved with it had you watched the first one and tell us a bit about your character I hadn't watched the first one I've been living abroad for a long time and um I was aware of it I know it had done really well um and uh so I, I knew who i knew lee and uh, hermione had done it and um so i was very excited to receive the scripts and started reading and was really sucked in by the premise the idea of a small community uh casting someone off because uh they decided that that person had done the unmentionable and killed a young man and and then moved on with their lives and this character that i was playing uh married to Catherine Kelly's character had divorced her five years ago on the back of this betrayal in that she had had supposedly an affair with a pupil and killed the pupil and then to find five years on that that decision of his was entirely unfounded because she's not guilty as the court would have decided and he is also in a position where he's about to get remarried to a woman with a teenage daughter, so to start a family essentially. And he's caught in this impossible moral quandary of he has to be 100% present for his new wife because you don't get married half heartedly. And yet he also owes it to his ex wife uh, because he abandoned her when she needed him most. And the idea of his own sense of guilt um and having to make amends for not having trusted his wife means it, he very much needs also to be 100 percent there for her so he can't do both and as a result he's kind of torn apart as an actor those are the moral quandaries that you want to sort of throw yourself into that's where drama um fizzes the most so i kept on reading and reading and reading and the scripts for me got better and better and it wasn't just the character that i was playing every single character is in an impossible position as a result of this change in judgment. And, you know, as I mentioned earlier on, our courts don't decide innocence. They decide guilt or, or not guilty. Uh, it's up to the community then to decide whether someone is truly innocent. And that's the final journey that Catherine's character has to go on. She has to try and regain her reputation, pick up the, the loose threads of her lives and, and to be forgiven but people don't forgive when they've based their own sense of a community on having had to turn their back on someone that has defined them as a community they've solved it they've moved on and then this reopens all the wounds and so long story short i just thought matt arledge and chris lang had written the most beautiful nuanced study of of how communities trust each other of how they define each other and how they need to judge in some regard to 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 make them whole and when that judgment turns out to be wrong how difficult it is for them it's a crisis of identity um and i thought they captured it really really well you know there's obviously no shortage out there of 
crime dramas, murder mysteries. What, what do you think it is that people have this kind of endless appetite for these sorts of stories? But then also, you know, each one has its unique take. So kind of this one, maybe in some way seems like it's happening in reverse because you start with the, the court judgment and then you're going backwards. And I also wondered if you thought there was like a bit of parallel I was thinking of the popularity of the mayor of East Town with Kate Winslet. Yeah, which I've watched, yeah. Um, completely yeah. different um, setting, but you know, there's obviously a, an appetite out there for these sorts of stories. Yeah, well, crime is essentially about the betrayal of the social contract and it's how communities come together. We abhor, you know, those betrayals, those moments where chaos threatens and communities bound together are bound together in their um, refusal to accept transgressional behavior and they expel those responsible. So Mayor of East Town, this uh, innocent story is set in Keswick in a small town in the, in the Lake District where everyone knows everyone, where your secrets have to be very closely kept in order to remain secret. Um, so there are there is a similarity between the two uh you know our, our show has a concept innocence you know as a concept threading the two seasons together the stories are set in different places with different actors and different characters but that essential concept of innocence uh makes it slightly different from mayor of beast town although i think our title is ironic i don't think there's anybody in the show that's innocent of any of anything because the act of judging someone, the act of finding them guilty and dismissing them is to ignore a lot of who they are. And in this case, they make the wrong decision uh, and it takes the courts to tell them that. Um, but people are much slower to, to forgive. And it's that journey of, you're absolutely right. There are, there are two stories here. There's, there's Catherine Kelly's character coming out and trying to create a future for herself. Uh, and there is the inevitable regression into the past in order to find out who actually committed the original crime. So the story goes in two directions. And uh, those directions, Catherine Kelly's character hopes will be mutually beneficial in that finding the guilty party can lead to healing and her being part of that community and to be accepted. But actually it doesn't really work like that because people are resentful of having to judge themselves, of having to hold their own actions to account. And it was much easier to see her as guilty, much easier to confine those problems to the past. And, you know, Kate Winslet in, in Mayor of Easttown, it, it's a very similar predicament. She's dealing with psychological trauma. Her family are dealing with psychological trauma in the past. And it's about the reluctance to open old wounds. Um, and I think both stories share that. And you were kind of mentioning, you know, not just your character, but, the, you know, so many interesting characters. It's almost like a an yeah. ensemble cast in a way yeah, yeah. obviously even though it's, it's focusing you know mainly on um Catherine's character so you know what was it like working with all those other actors and you know the making of it being set in Keswick obviously beautiful surroundings so that must have been fun as well but obviously quite an intense story for you all to be acting out together yeah yeah it, it was a bizarre situation because um we, we shot in Keswick towards the end of the shoot but we also shot a lot of it in in Wicklow County Wicklow south of Dublin so we were traveling in to Ireland from Eat Out to Help Out in the UK where we were getting all quite friendly again uh, get, and, and then we landed in Ireland which which a few days after I landed and I had to we all had to isolate 10 days full quarantine um, when we landed uh, Ireland went into full lockdown went to level five uh, out of five levels um, so we weren't able to socialize as you would normally do as a, as a cast or a crew when you're on location, you become each other's family, social life, as well as work colleagues. And that, that didn't really happen. It was quite a solitary experience. So telling a story about a close knit community, um, whilst not having, having that sort of sense of close knit, um, community was, was a challenge for sure. But part of the job was we were one of the first British um television programs to go back and try to shoot under covid conditions so there's a huge responsibility on us not to get it wrong not to have any cases which we didn't um and to show that the industry can function um with the new protocols and guidelines but mainly because um 
you know, we felt, felt a responsibility to each other, to our producer, Jeremy, and, um, you know, to, to the industry as, as a large and it, at large. And it, it really was a moment where uh, I, I took tremendous heart from the fact that we were able to do it yeah. and, 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 not, and not have any case. And it shows that you can, you know, work in this COVID, post-COVID world if you're sensible uh, and if you have responsibility to, to, to those around you and you can get it done. But it was difficult to make this particular kind of show with that kind of, uh, you know, inability to really rehearse, no rehearsal, no read through, uh, very little getting to know you time before you start shooting these scenes of intimate relationships and fraught relationships. So it was a challenge from, a, from an acting point of view, for sure. Mm. And then your character does have it quite tricky in a way, and probably for you playing it, that, you know, you're almost in this triangle with, with these two women. Um, and so how did you in particular see like Priyanka's character? Because maybe, you know, things start to switch on us, you know, when she starts to come in more like the villain and you have one in particular tricky scene with her, this, you know, when she's coming back and she's trying to act like, you know, oh, we're, we're kind of young, um, enjoying our relationship again. So, you know, what was it like acting those scenes with her? Yeah, it, uh, well, Pri, Pri and I were at drama school at the same time at, at Lambda. So that helped hugely and I was able we were able to talk over the phone because we couldn't meet to really hash out what is it about this couple where they are in life why they found each other what works and what doesn't so that was a massive help Catherine I'd never met Catherine before and I heard wonderful we, we both worked on a show called Strike Back and a, a mutual friend Warren Brown had said you know you guys will get on great and it'll be it'll be fine and it really was but it's hard when you are trying to portray a relationship that exists in three dimensions and you have very little time to, to, to behave together in the same physical space. So, um, but having said that, these, these two actors are just extraordinary and um, uh, it couldn't, have, couldn't be more easy to get to know in, in very different ways. Um, so Karen, Priyanka's character and, and my character are finding themselves together later in life. It's a different kind of relationship. It's a, it's a relationship of, um, uh, it, it, it's, they're quite, they're in quite public roles. So he's the chief of the local um, um, parole board. She's a high ranking social worker, school governor. She's got a teenage daughter. She's not from that area, he is. Uh, it's, it's a sort of power couple. They're, they're in this sort of public service role establishment couple. So there's a, there's, it, 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 it's more than just uh, a physical, emotional connection. It's a social connection. And then the relationship with his first wife, you have to imagine is they were young and they met for different reasons. And I think each, is, each woman is obviously has a different part of him and as a as a man he is very public minded he feels that he has to be seen to be entirely supportive to his fiance who he's about to marry you don't go into marriage you know equivocating and yet as a man he has to really re-examine how quickly he moved on before from someone who's been proved not to have done the things that she did and he feels he needs to be her, 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 her too. So he has to divide himself in two and that's not a comfortable place to be. So that's the psyche of, 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 of him is, is, you know, split identity and how you deal with that and how you bring that together in your own vision of who you are. And you can't be entirely present for either of these individuals. He's caught up in his own mental um, hell. Yeah. And you had an intimacy coordinator, I think, for the first time. What was that but, experience like, Devin? Was that <laughs> unusual, you know, but a help it, as well? It, 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 it's, it's, it's quite strange to have worked as long as I've worked and done, I've done quite a few of those kinds of scenes. And, you know, you look back and uh, they are really nerve wracking um, because you want to, you, you, you want to sort of portray these characters in their, you know, emotional, vulnerable nakedness and, and to make it real and make it work, but you're terrified. And you are so eager to please, especially when you're 
young in your career and it's very easy to be manipulated and to get to be done to do something that you're not comfortable doing it's not comfortable it's not comfortable walking onto a workplace scenario surrounded by fully clothed you know cynical adults eating sandwiches and drinking coffee whilst you strip down to your nothing and then pretend to you know have sex with someone it, it's extraordinarily difficult thing to do and you get a thick skin in order to just to get in there and do it. And I've never had anything go wrong in one of those situations, but you can see so easily how it would be easy to compromise your own sense of, of what you are comfortable with, what you want to do. So I am extremely grateful that the industry has come to this point. It is still strange for me to have someone come on the set and then sort of arrange this because I'm just not used to it, but uh, it's the way forward. The young lady who did it was fantastic. She treated it for us. It was like an acting exercise. It was a trust exercise. Mm -hmm. So it was like being back in drama school. And, um, you know, there's a bit of me that was older and more cynical and was like, oh, I, I'm not sure I need to go entirely this route, but it really worked and it helped pre and it helped uh, all of us just, just feel comfortable. And um, yeah, our industry's growing and evolving and maturing and um, rightly, you know, it needs, to, it needs to happen this way. And that seems interesting anyway, because it's kind of, it's trying to be as though, you know, you've still got the fire in a relationship. But of course, in that moment, there's like the double edged thing that in reality, it's not exactly like that anyway. No, but it, it you know, it, it's trying to be movie sex, but that's why the scene works is because they're aware that this is what they need to be to each other in order for it to seem exciting. And the relationship isn't that relationship. So there's a bit of performative, demonstrative, mm this is what we're gonna do, we're gonna have sex on the stairs. And what I liked about it is that, that in the movies, you know, happens so effortlessly and it's so, I want to be that person. But I think for a lot of people, we do inherit our standards from films and our, you know, we, we aspire and dream and wish that our lives would work like that. And I think that's a little moment where these two are slightly aware of what they're doing there's a kid upstairs in a bedroom and they're having sex on the stairs and they're aware that this isn't really them but they're going to do it anyway because this is what they feel they have to measure up to so that, that yeah that scene was cool I, I, I sort of um it was an example of of, of, a, of a love scene really telling the story about where these people are and where they're unhappy about where they are and where they wish they could be and how comfortable that sort of gulf between the people they would like to be and people that they actually are is. And do you think that's also, you know, scenes like that and also having perhaps like, you know, relationships shown on screen, people who are that bit older, more in their, you know, middle of life rather than, you know, always kind of like 20 year old women and, and all the rest. People kind of want that realism and they want to see people of different ages and at different points in their life. And perhaps you know, maybe Hollywood films are still catching up, but in TV, perhaps we're seeing more opportunities yeah. for a variety of relationships to be shown and, and more realistic elements in those relationships. Well, I, look, I think British television has always been good at, at, you know, not sort of putting too much Vaseline on the lens. Uh, if, if that sounds awful in the context we're talking about. Um, uh, you know, in, in terms of sugarcoating life and making it all aspirational, we, we've always been quite good at making the kitchen sink dramas and, and showing people as they are. Um, that aside, I think you're right. I think, you know, even American television is excelling at that these days. We're turning real stories and we want the stories to see, to acknowledge the difficulties in life. And, uh, you know, the, the, the old Hollywood, you know, format of, of romance and, you know, guy meets girl and they, they say the right things at the right time and they make the right moves without having to ask permission. You know, all that stuff is um, a bit dated now. So I, I, yeah, it's great. Uh, you know, and that relationship between the two characters, you know, it's, it's, it's more than a physical attraction. It, it's, it's, it, but, it, but even they feel the pressure that that element of their lives has to measure up. And we're always measuring up. I mean, one thing is, we, we are telling more realistic stories on TV, but you know, you put social media alongside that and social media is still sort of knocking the edges off and making everything look great and ev everything should seem effortless. Um, so, you know, it's a side of us. We always want to present this, life comes easy to me, I'm good at this, I'm good at that, I don't worry about stuff. 
um, but we all we all do and, and thankfully television is the most well at the moment maybe the most grown up medium in terms of showing that. Mm. And you know it's one of those real like easy to binge watch in a way series because you're really on tenterhooks the whole time not sure which way it's going to twist or turn but there's a lot like we've been saying of human drama relationships so what do you hope people will take away from it overall? Well yeah it's 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 four hours um, less if you cut out the ad breaks um, so it's one really, really good story. Um, and it, I hope what people take from it is, yes, there's a thriller element and a, and, a, and, a, and a whodunit within this thing, but it's really about everyone has committed a crime. Everyone is guilty of judging each other and of doing it for the sake of getting on with their own lives so that they can worry about their own stuff. They're willing to sacrifice someone from their community in order that their own lives are easier. And this is a film about actually you no know, you have a responsibility to everyone in your community and if there is a victim you have to be very careful before you blame them and before you kick them out and remove their rights you know and uh, we've been through a massive national experiment this last year about collective behavior individual rights sacrificing your individual rights in order for the collective to do better. Um, we've been quite quick to judge at times, to find blame for something that's entirely a natural event that's part of being a human being. You know, we are biological creatures that are vulnerable to viruses and bacteria. And yet we have a responsibility to help each other. We've sacrificed some groups of society to save others. You know, that's really what this is about, this particular um, thriller and, and Mayor of Easttown too. And, and, and all good sort of small town dramas are about exactly this. It's about how the group responds when, when the group is threatened by an individual and, and, and what they're willing to sacrifice and whether the group can ever ch change direction. The courts, in this case, do it quicker than the community. You know, the courts say not guilty, but the community doesn't decide innocent. And it's about that sort of responsibility we have one to another and a great whodunit as well there's a great investigative cop show in there too and i think i'm almost out of time but um just very quickly you know what you might be working on next obviously you've had some amazing tv roles um other than this one but are you going to stay in tv maybe do film what's going to happen next uh both uh, i've just finished my involvement in a tv show um set in italy with the media fox and tara fitzgerald um, which I just came back from Rome to do. It's uh, at the moment it's called Signora Volpe. I don't know uh, what it'll end up being called, um, but that was great. And I'm off to do a Neil Marshall film in Hungary in a couple of weeks, um, which is, uh, if anybody's familiar with Neil Marshall's world, sort of horror, zombies, soldiers, um, all sorts of couldn't be more different, um, playing a really broad character with an eye patch, um, an American um, army officer. So I'm excited about that. And then after that, I don't know, I'm, I'm working on my own stuff, trying to write some stuff as well. So um, yeah, you know, really looking forward to our industry coming back full guns blazing after this very difficult year. Um, I'm hoping to do some theater at some point um, and, and, you know, get in fact in front of live audiences because that's the area that's really, really been hit in the arts. So yeah, it's been tough for all of us. Um, I've been lucky enough to do things like Innocent, which um, got me through. And um, yeah, but I'm really, really excited about the future. I think um, entertainment and um, thought provoking uh, art is is something that we've all relied upon. And, um, you know, we need to we need to keep keep making, especially in this country. I think it's going to turn into the most important export that we that we have. And um, yeah, so I couldn't be more excited about the future and just very grateful for everyone and everyone's sacrifice in, in terms of the last year and getting us to this point where we can have a future. Mm -hmm. Right, well, fantastic. That was so great. Um, thanks so much for sharing all that with us and best of luck with all your future endeavors. Thank you, Sarah. It was lovely talking uh, with lovely you. Lovely to speak to you. Good luck with everything that you're doing. Yeah, thanks a lot. Cheers.